The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. So, uh, young men and young women, do you enjoy your Dharma school? Yes. And w <laughs> you better say that. <laughs> And what do you learn? What's really important from the Dhamma school? Dhamma. Dhamma is important from the Dhamma school, but not the school bit. <laughs> do you get homework with Dhamma school? That's why you like it. A little bit. A little bit. Is homework good? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if you didn't do homework, then what would happen? Would you really learn anything? No. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So, one of the most important things to learn is also learning how to be uh, calm and quiet. Are you very quiet when you go to Dharma school? Do you remember one of the favourite stories which I often tell at Dharma School about the talkative tortoise? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <coughs> you know the talkative tortoise story? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe I won't tell the talkative tortoise story. But do you know about, because I've got some a cough, do you know the coughing story? Yes, I know that one. <laughs> no, you don't. But are you afraid of ghosts? Because this is a ghost story. Do you want to listen to the ghost story? Yeah, it's really funny. Okay. So here we go. So, there was a, a gentleman who went to the, the Dhamma talk in the temple. And he went on quite late. And after the Dhamma talk had finished, he had a choice of going home the long way round or taking the shortcut. The trouble with the shortcut, the shortcut went through the cemetery at night time when it was really dark and scary. Oh, he decided he was going to take the shortcut through the city. He didn't believe in ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, he didn't believe in ghosts. But this is, this is what happened. When he went into the cemetery, it wasn't as brightly lit as on the street. It was actually quite dark and spooky. And the wind was <laughs> <laughs> and this <coughs> and as he got halfway through the cemetery, nothing had happened. It's only a little bit to go. But then after the halfway mark he could you know those feelings sometimes when people feel there's somebody following you? He felt that somebody, or rather something, was following him. So automatically he started to walk a little bit faster. And as he was walking a little bit faster, he noticed whatever was following him was also going faster. And he listened very carefully. He could actually hear it. Bump. Bump, bump, and so he started walking really fast. And as he was walking really fast, he could hear it behind him, bump, bump, bump. And that's when he made a big mistake. He decided to look around to see whether what was following him was real or just imagination. And when he looked around, he couldn't believe what he saw. 
His eyes went wide, his heart started to race, and sweat started coming down from his body, because you know what it was? There was a coffin, a coffin, a big wooden box, and it still had the dirt on it, it was falling off from the spider webs, and the coffin was running after him, bump, bump, bump. <laughs> oh, that was really scary. So what did he do? He ran as fast as he could. And it doesn't matter how fast he ran, still, bump, bump, bump. <laughs> the coffin was coming after him. He got outside of the cemetery and his house was only a little way down the road. But still, bump, bump, bump. The coffin kept coming after him. And then he reached his garden gate, opened the gate, closed it. And of course, the coffin couldn't jump. So he thought, ah, oh, I'm safe now. Bump! Bump! As the coffin started to break down the garden gate. One more bump! And the garden gate was in splinters. So he got to the front door of his house. And he got out his front door keys. And what happened? He dropped him. He dropped his keys. Bump, 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 as the coffin was coming after him. And he managed to pick up any key, didn't know which one it was. It was really good fortune. He managed to pick up the right key, put it in the lock, open the lock, open the door, and slam the door just as the coffin came to the front door. Because you could see it through the, the stained glass window of the front door. <sighs> he thought, I'm safe now. Bump! <laughs> As the coffin started to, 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 to uh, hit against the, 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 the uh, front door. Yeah. And harder and harder, the coffin started to, to, to hit at the front door. And first of all, the hinges were coming off. The wood was splintering. So he ran up the, stores, the stairs to the second story and just as he got to the top, BAMP! <laughs> and the coffin had broken into the house. Oh, no. oh yeah, very scary. And the coffin, he was at the top of the stairs and the coffin was turning to the left, turning to the right, looking for him. And the coffin looked. He was at the top of the stairs. So you know what the coffin did? Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> Started to go up the stairs. There was only one more room he could hide in. The bathroom, because it had a lock on it. So he went into the bathroom, locked the door, and he could hear the coffin coming up the stairs. Bump, 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 bump! <laughs> As he started, as he started to uh, break down the door of the bathroom. Now this was a very strong coffin because it was so strong he could break down the front door of the house. He realized it would be only a few minutes before they broke down the bathroom door. Oh yeah, bump! And the bathroom door gave way. And now there was no escape, no other place to hide, as the coffin saw him and started moving towards him. Bump, bump, bump. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't know what to do, but he saw there was a bottle on the shelf. He picked up the bottle and threw it at the coffin. And it smashed all over the coffin and this really brown stuff, liquid came out. And the coffin stopped and never moved again. Because what he picked up? Cough syrup, yeah. <laughs> Cough syrup. It stops the coffin. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> okay, that's a little gift for the kids, the coffin story. Because I've got a... <coughs> so you don't need to be afraid. Do you want another story? Yes. Yes. Okay, but not a ghost story this time. This is, this is how... How is important we look after one another? Do you look after one another? Yes. And you help one another? Do you know the story of how a mouse rat killed a chicken, a pig, and a cow? Do you think a mouse trap can kill a cow? I will tell you how it happened. Yes. So, once in a farm in the bush, there was the farmer, his wife, and they had a family of mice. Yeah, five mice. Are mice scary? Kind of. No. Yeah. <coughs> well, these mice were good mice. Just five of them. But also, the mice had these three friends. The chicken, the pig, and the cow. And they'd always help their friends. So one day, just when the farmer said, oh, I'd really love some uh, fried chicken today, the mice heard that, and they went to see the uh, chicken and said, look, pretend you're sick, pretend you're dead, because the farmer's wife is going to come after you, thinking that she's going to get some chicken to fry for the farmer's husband, for the farmer. So the mouse would always tell the chicken to actually to hide. And when it came time for the, uh, the farmer wanted some pork sausages, the mice would go and tell the pig, to disappear, hide, because they're after you to make some sausages. And whenever they wanted a steak, they tell the cow, listen, go into the forest, hide, so that the farmer's wife won't find you. And that way the three mice would always look after their friends, the chicken, the pig, and the cow. So the chicken, pig, and cow lived a happy life. But then one day, one of the mice, one of the mice was looking through a crack in the, uh, in the wall and they saw the farmer's wife open a package from Australia Post and when they looked inside, they found out it was a mouse trap. The farmer's wife had got a mouse trap. And there's only one reason they got mouse trap to kill the mice. They said, Oh, we're finished. We're dead. We're toast. They're going to kill us. Imagine that was you and you saw your parents get some electric chair for you or something. <laughs> you to get very upset. So, they said, we're in trouble. One night we're going to be cleaning up, running through the kitchen and Sooner or later, it's only a matter of time, we're going to be killed. So what should we do? He said, ah, let's ask our friends. So they went to see Mrs. Chicken and said, what should we do? You know what Mrs. Chicken said? Not my problem. Nothing to do with me. How can a mouse trap kill a chicken? So they were very disappointed that someone they'd always helped wouldn't help them. So then they went to see... Mrs. Pig, or Mr. Pig, and Mr. P <coughs> you know what Mr. Pig said? Oink. <laughs> oink, oink, nothing to do with me, not my problem. Because how can, how can a mouse trap kill a pig? Not my problem, sort it out yourselves. And even the pig wouldn't help their friends. And then they went to see the last hope was Mrs. Cow. And Mrs. Cow, she was busy just chewing some grass. She said, look, you've got to help us. 
There's a mouse trap in the house. It's going to kill us. So, not my problem. How can a mouse trap kill a cow? And so their friends wouldn't help because they think it didn't matter to them. But the next night, the next night, one of the little mice was running across the kitchen floor looking for some food. And because it was dark, it went into the mouse trap. And bang, it lost its life. And that little, that little mouse went into mouse heaven. Do you think the mice go to heaven if they're being good mice? No. Well, anyway, this mouse did. <laughs> and when the other mice, because it was a good mouse, when the other mouse heard the sound, they came out to check, and there their friend, their brother, was dead in the mouse trap. And those four other mice, they started crying. It's not nice to lose a friend. And so they were holding one another, crying and weeping, mourning the death of their friend. And that's when the farmer's wife came out. And when the farmer's wife saw these four mice holding one another, arm around one another, crying and weeping, she'd never seen anything like that in her life. Have you ever seen four mice crying? <laughs> no, she had neither. It was such a shock to her that she fell over and she hit her head. And that's when the farmer, her husband, found her. So I put her to bed. It was too far to call a doctor, so he thought, what can I get for someone who's sick like this? And he thought, ah, chicken soup. <laughs> it's supposed to be good for your health. Chicken soup, yeah. So where could he get chicken soup from? The chicken. And that's how Mrs. Chicken lost her life. To be put in a pot with some vegetables to make chicken soup for the, uh, the farmer's wife. But, even with chicken soup, the farmer's wife wasn't getting better. So I had to call in the doctor. And the doctor came from such a long way, the doctor had to have something to eat. He said, well, what would you like to eat? He said, oh, maybe some sausages. <laughs> Where can I get sausages from? Mr. Pig. So that's how Mr. Pig lost its life. To make sausages for the doctor. But even though the doctor tried his very best, she never survived. She died. Farmer's wife. And at the funeral, they had to entertain all the guests after the funeral service. And so, what do you think? He gave his guests to eat. Cow. Yeah, roast beef sandwiches. <laughs> and where did he get the beef from? Cow. The cow. So that's how the cow lost his life. So this is how a mouse trap killed a chicken, a pig, and a cow. So even if one of your friends at school asks you for some help, never say, oh, it will never bother me. Nothing to do with me. Not my problem. Maybe it is your problem. So that's why you have to look after one another. Okay, so don't think, oh, not my problems. Because sometimes it is. A little mouse trap can kill even a big cow. So never think it's not your concern. Okay? Very good. Ghost story. What about the one of my friends who went to England? <laughs> but this is a scary ghost story. Are you prepared for this? Really? Okay. So, 
this, okay, I'll tell this one. This person, they never been to England before. And so one of the things they did was to go and visit the castles. And in those castles, they're very old. And underneath, they had the dungeons. And in those dungeons, many bad things happened. But she went with a guide to visit the underground of the, of the castle, the dungeons. And that was really a scary place. So scary that every time they opened the door, and every time they walked on the wooden floors, and when they went past any window, it was the spookiest place she'd ever been. And at the end of the tour, when they finished the tour of the castle, she asked the guest, they asked the guide, are there any ghosts in this castle? Are there any? And he replied, in all the years, in all the years I've lived in this castle, I've never ever seen a ghost. She felt relieved. But then she asked a stupid question. How long have you lived in this castle? <laughs> Over 300 years. <coughs> <coughs> he was the ghost. We don't need to be afraid because many times ghosts can look after you and be kind to you. Very good. So, had enough ghost stories? No. no. Okay, just one last ghost story. Yes. <coughs> about about kindness. So this was. <coughs> Sometimes that people feel that ghosts are dangerous, but they're not. They can be really, really kind and help you. Just, <coughs> just like um, this young man in Perth, and he was really poor, and the only job he could get was a, a laborer on a building site. And because he was a builder's laborer, he had to clean up after everybody else. And one evening, cleaning up a renovated house, he heard a sound. Put your hand under here. Put your hand under here. He looked around. There was no one there. So he thought he was imagining it. But then he heard it again. Put your hand under here. And many of you may know this person. If you've ever done a retreat at Jana Grove in Perth, you probably had your, your food cooked by a lady called Bianca. For those of you who've been to Jana Grove, and this was Bianca's partner before he passed away. True story. So he had nothing to lose. He put his hand underneath the house, just as he was told by the ghost. And underneath the house, there was a, a tin box. And he pulled out the tin box, and he opened it, and it was full of thousands of dollars because the previous owner of the house, that's where he had hidden his money so he didn't need to pay tax. 
and now the owner had died, that's why they were renovating his house. And the donor realized this was a very good young man, very diligent, and he wanted this young man to have that money. And so he put his hand under the house, and he got so much money, that paid off, that paid the deposit for his first house. So, if ever you, walking past an old house in <laughs> Melbourne, if any of you hear that sound, put your hand under here, put your hand under here. Please put your hand under there. <laughs> and if you find a tin box, because you heard that story at the BSV, 50% has to go to NBM. <laughs> That's our new fundraising strategy. To see where wealthy people have hidden their money under the house. Okay, Adrian? Yeah. So that, that was a true story. Yeah, true. Okay. <laughs>